Thank you for the invitation. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I am from National Development Council. Today, I will talk about the challenges and practices in just transition in Taiwan. National Development Council in Taiwan is responsible for coordination between different ministries in the government. At the same time, we also serve as a think tank to our central government. So first of all, I will tell you something about what government have done in Taiwan. I will also talk about some things that is at the proposal stage. Of course, that our governments have decided to reach net zeros by 2050. In our presidential address in January, our President Tsai Ing-wen have mentioned about the action plan we have for net zero by 2050. On the World Earth Day, they also he, she also mentions that we need to work toward net zero with the world. The National Development Council have aggregated information from different ministries, and we want to emphasize four major strategies and two different foundations. In 2015 to 2016, we have talked about non-nuclear homeland or um, 2025 energy transition. Of course, energy transition is ongoing. It's related to energy sectors and industry sectors. For 2020, 2050 net zero, we also need to transform our life and society. So life transition is a micro level, while social transition is a macro level situation. In our daily life, we need to incorporate different actions, for example, like green mobility, so besides daily life, we will also need to think about other factors in the process. In our daily life, we have to think about how do we allocate disposable income in our household. That's something we need to think about. People with different income level may encounter challenges in the transition process. Now we are encouraging people to use green mobility or electric mobility. Some people would argue that this is important to implement the green um, mobility. But some scholars also emphasize that you need to use public transportation to replace some of the private vehicles. Therefore, in the life transition process, you have to think about um, many different aspects. The National Science Council have started to invest in many different emerging technologies in the process. And I know that they include the social science into their investment as well. I think this is critical and important. In the social transition process for Net Zero 2050, we want to emphasize just transition and citizens' engagement. Now in Taiwan, we are drafting the Climate Crisis Response Act, and we include just transition into the draft as well in Article 6 and Art Article 8. Several legislators in Taiwan have paid extra attention to just transitions 
and policy frameworks. So just a clarification to people who have raised the questions beforehand. In our public declarations on March 30, we have drafted 12 key strategies that will go across seven different ministries. So the first version of this will be publicly announced in December, which is this month. But that's not the final versions. I think that is a document for public consultations. Some of them may not be finalized at the moment. We need to go through discussions within the society or within the scientific communities. Here on the right hand side, you will see some of the renewable energies and um, storage facilities. On the left hand side, you will talk about carbon sink, um, net zero life, green finance, uh, zero disposal, etc. etc. So it will cover agriculture, financial services, um, National Development Council, Ministry of Economic Affairs. Ministry of um, Finance as well. So several ministries are involved in this process. So within all these strategies, we request these ministries to give us a policy framework and policy ideas and guidelines in the process. Besides these 12 key strategies, we also identify other issues. Professor Trencher mentions the, the issues in Japan. And we also see issue in Taiwan. As we phase out petrochemical industries and fossil fuel industries, we also need to think about the future for these workers and these smaller businesses. They will encounter similar issues like in Japan as well in the future. They may have unemployment issues. We have to pay more attention to small and medium-sized enterprises and service industry. This is a important discussion for everyone here in Taiwan. SME and service industries in Taiwan are largely related to wholesale, retail, and hospitality industries. Many of these workers have lower income. So what kind of policy impacts will net zero happen to them? What kind of resources that we can invest for them? I will now address the challenges for just transition. I need to tell you that I will look into the definitions, topics, pilot cases, and political thinking for just transition. I actually don't have any answers to these challenges in my presentation today. However, I would like to raise the topics that we are experiencing so we can talk about them together because this is an important part of policy making. Now let's look at the definitions of just transition. The narrow definition, namely the definition of IOL, should be known by many. It's about employment opportunities and leaving no one behind, like what Professor Trencher just mentioned. The narrow definition focuses on the employment opportunities and workforce during transition. Let me give you an example. It is actually not about just transition, but a topic we have seen before. In the past, there were a lot of typing companies in Taiwan, especially around universities. However, with PE2, Windows, and Word, the typing companies became extinct. What did we do back at the time? This is the same issue, only on a larger scale. The zero emissions transition it's not about the invention of anything anymore. In a larger sense, when we talk about just transition, we follow the EU's broad definition. 
The EU states that a just transition seeks to ensure that the substantial benefits of a green economy transition are shared widely, while also supporting those who stand to lose economically. Let me pause here for a moment. When we talk about just transition, is it something new? Is it something we have never seen before? My questions are: first of all, how new is it? Second of all, is there an orthodox framework? Third of all, what tools do we have? We might not know our way very well yet. This is why I am raising the topics today. We have experienced similar issues in the past, just like the one we are facing with the zero emissions transition. About a decade ago, we talked about how to mitigate climate impact. So this is something that、um, the government already tackled in the past. However, the questions we faced back at the time were not exactly the same. We talked a lot about、uh, the restructuring of the industries. And we also talked about mitigation and adaptation. So it's about、um, infrastructure. But now we are looking at、uh, climate change. But we want to incorporate、um, social transformation into this topic. And another question that we we also tackled in the past is that with the introduction of some policies, some industries, some workers、um, actually suffer. From the impact, from the damage. I don't know if you guys remember. Besides、uh, climate change, I think it's it's WTO, it's free trade. So when we switch to free trade, some people also lost their jobs、um, due to it, which、uh, had an impact on consumption and on、um, production, on、um, manufacturing. And they required the、uh, the response and the assistance from the communities and from the government. So this is not entirely new. These are all issues that we tackled before. But what tools do we have to tackle the impact of just transition?、Uh, there are、um, some policy tools which are a little more technical.、Um, uh, but many、um, organizations have. Um, talked about have addressed the issue of green employment, and so these all exist already. Actually, and in terms of economics, we also analyze the、uh, in, uh, the benefits of the product,、um, but also we can take advantage of risk analysis. And in Taiwan, we also.、Um, Use environmental assessment, but these are the tools that we are very good at using. It's just that we are now using them in a much larger framework. But people, I think people have to remember that there's no right or wrong, and it's a big challenge for the government. But I think the private sector, the academia, and the government have to work together to make this work. And the potential topics that we can see here are、uh, the rudimentary topics that the departments have addressed. We have put them into five different categories, including employment, industrial trans、uh, transformation,、uh, regional development, consumption, and governance. Today, we're talking about human-oriented just transition,、uh, which is what makes、uh, these. Topics very important because it is about our laborers, it is about our industries, and it is about our communities. And when it comes to the government, it's about public affairs. So we are including a lot of different groups into just transition, but I think、uh, two groups are missing,、um, which is、uh, the stakeholders and the、um, investors. You cannot see clearly what actors are included in these five topics, but th- which is why we need to go into it, and we need to look at these topics in detail. It's just that so far we're not there yet.、Uh, 
Uh, we need to work on this faster. Uh, when we talk about people, we also have different ethnic groups, we have different incomes, we have different genders, and we have different um, generations. This is a very long road that we have to walk together. And in this slide, uh, I'm talking about the political thinking of just transition. I'm also echoing what uh, Professor Yun just said. Like, a, like what I just told you, we don't have one thing that will get us there, that will just make us achieve our goals. Um, on the other hand, we need to continuously review what we're doing. Uh, what I want to say is this has to be inclusive. And the framework has to be adjusted all the time. Because when we want to do things in an orthodox or in a right way, we will lose balance. And the second part about political thinking is the cost structure. We can see that um, in the, e the EU wants to share the profits, the benefits of, tra of transition, which is why we need to mitigate the impact in terms of um, the cost structure. Uh, it is easy. If we cause any damage, we need to uh, give compensation. Uh, um, later, we talked about, for example, taxes. Uh, we can mitigate. Uh, the impact with taxes and all the all these are a cost structure. But can we, for example, plan our policies um, based on these? Um, in Taiwan, the uh, there's a good example of power plants, and we have um, NGOs proposing the idea of uh, proposing initiatives nowadays. Because in the past, we have compensation, we have financing, we have tax. But the innovation um, can be many things. It can be financial tools, for example. Uh, we talked about, for example, uh, GHG, GHG emissions. There are different categories, which is why we can create many financial tools that um, in in the form of trust or in the form of insurance. And I think all of you know that if we can calculate, if we can analyze a risk in terms of uh, insurance, then we can design this into tools. For example, um, and the government can also be involved. And all these are the challenges that we face today. And we ha I have three more examples here. In terms when different countries face um, just transition, there are different um, topics that um, they face. For example, Scotland. Scotland worked a lot with their energy sector, especially in the fossil fuel employment opportunities. And in Taiwan, we are talking about vehicle electrification. Um, this involves uh, many different uh, departments, including the um, Council of Agriculture. So they are um, starting a dialogue in terms of a uh, just transition. Um, in Taiwan, when it comes to vehicles, uh, we're talking about uh, the most important group is scooters. We have many, many scooters in Taiwan. We have also about uh, 10,000 to 20,000 um, companies that f uh, offer scooter services. And th this uh, is, this includes up to 100,000 jobs, and they will suffer from the direct impact of vehicle electrification. But of course, when people think about this, they will first consider the costs between a traditional scooter and an electric scooter, and also how convenient it is for me to have an electric scooter. Is it easy to charge? And all these companies that offer services for scooters 
Are they going to stay in the sector and offer services to electric scooters, or are they going to transition into doing something else? Are we going to be able to find new jobs for people who、uh, worked on、uh, traditional scooters? And in terms of the fishery and electricity symbiosis,、um, I think we have all heard、um, stories about this. And there are、um, different actors involved in this.、Uh, we have the fishermen, and we have also the owner of the、uh, landowners, and also developers. So when we think about this, we have to think about rent,、um, and we also have to think about、um, the capital. So, so when it has an impact on fishery, how many people might have、um, an impact on their jobs? So, and also, how are the benefits shared? So,、um, last but not least, I am talking about the、uh, carbon sink. So this is somehow related to the profit splitting me mechanism. This is something that we have been addressing、uh, together with the banks. So all over the world,、uh, they would have, for example, a trust for wetlands, for forests, or for historical attractions.、Uh, for example, when a company has problems with carbon emission, they would basically pay for a forest to balance out the carbon emission. But also, some companies create a trust,、uh, which also creates、uh, employment opportunities. And if、um, there's any benefits coming out of, for example, the wetland trust, how will they share the、uh, profits? For example, if a community works together to maintain the wetlands, will they be entitled to the profit afterwards? This is、uh, the concept that we have to work on, and we already see some examples on the international stage. And in Taiwan, we're beginning to think in this direction, and we have to discuss further. Um, I am running out of time, so I'm going to very briefly go through、uh, the rest of my presentation.、Oh, when we implement、uh, just transition, and this is the framework、um, proposed by CSIS, it talks a lot about participation, civic participation. It also talks a lot about the scope of impact. So, as I just said,、uh, the Framework is not fixed yet, and there's nothing orthodox about the framework. So, for the moment,、um, like what we all talked about, we have different steps. I need to tell you very honestly that we are still between phase one, which is planning, and phase two, preparations for the moment. So, how can we make this comprehensive and flexible? This is something that we are still working on. So at the end of the year,、um, with the version that we are、uh, making public,、um, we have a lot of work to do, and we need to involve a lot of discussions from the society. And to be honest, we are under quite some stress because there are a lot of different theories.、Uh, but like I just said, this is something that we all faced before. It's like what happened when we joined the WTO. But there are also questions that we talked a lot about without being able to solve. So、um, I'll give you an example. It's about the civic participation of just transition. There is no fixed answer, so we have an ongoing discussion about this. And also, we're talking about the science of data, which is how we can employ data in just transition. So I'm glad that I'm talking about the challenges instead of,、uh, instead of solutions today. So this is、um, issues that we will continue to face. This is our current practice. We have multiple ministries and the National Development Council who are participating in this process. And we also have a just transition commission that involve public and private sectors, 
and in the process, we also need to have consultation meetings. We will probably have a lot of seminars and public hearings as well. We hope that within and across ministries, we can work together to communicate with the public. We don't have the just transition commission yet. We are proposing this idea to our government. This concludes my presentations. We hope that in the net zero just transitions process, no one is left behind. We want to focus on humans. It's human centered, but at the same time, we also need to take care of all different stakeholders. Thank you.